Hello, this is David G. Hartwell. I'm a senior editor at Tor and Forge Books in New York. I've been editing science fiction since 1970. I've edited a lot of people over the course of my career, but I'm pleased to also be the editor of Paul Levinson. I edited his first novel, The Silk Code, and I edited his most recent novel, The Plot Saves Socrates, and all the books in between. Author Paul Levinson. Help me, Paul Levinson. You're my only hope. I'm Paul Levinson. This is Levinson News Clips with a review of Lost 6.5, which had another inexplicable intersection of characters in the alternate Los Angeles reality. Jack runs into Dogen at a music competition. And the pianist competing in the auditorium may be even more important to understanding what's going on, or understanding the nature of this alternate L.A. reality in which Flight 815 didn't crash on the island. It's Jack's son, David, who doesn't exist in our original lost reality. Jack had a wife, of course, in the original, but no children as far as we know. Both ended in divorce, but in alternate Los Angeles, Jack has a piano virtuoso son. This is another piece of evidence for something I mentioned last week in my Better L.A. review. Our characters are doing a little better in this alternate reality than in the original. But in 6.5, there's also a hint of something else in this alternate reality. It seems that Jack, at least, is slightly out of it. His memory's not quite there. First, he's not quite sure about an appendix scar. He asks his mother about it, and she says, sure, you had your appendix taken out when you were younger, and Jack replies, not 100% convincingly, I thought, that he remembers. Then Jack doesn't know that his son was in the music competition. The explanation that David is keeping this from Jack is not unreasonable, but it still seemed to me that Jack's memory was a little less than fully charged. What could this be an indication of? That the L.A. better reality is not the prime reality, so that its denizens don't quite have a complete hold on their realities? Perhaps. Meanwhile, our original Jack back on the island gets taken to a lighthouse by Hurley, under Jacob's direction, where they discover a device that shows Jack's house as a child in a live mirror. This is apparently how Jacob has been keeping an eye on Jack and other people with names on the wheel. Were these the same names we saw on the wall last week? Probably. All of this reminded me of Prester John's Speculum, a semi-mythical medieval device that Prester John, a semi-mythical character, used to see across hundreds of miles... And perhaps, I always thought, also across time, but who can say? Back on the island, Jack destroys the speculum in the lighthouse, which is fitting, since nothing remains of Prester John's speculum in our world today. And to top off this episode about Jack and his family, we finally get to meet Claire on the island. She's crazed, looking for her baby, and has a friend, Folak, inhabited now by the nemesis. So, lots of questions still not answered. For example, who is Jack's wife in the new reality in L.A.? I thought it was definitely the wife, Sarah, that Jack had in our original reality. But my niece thinks it could be Libby. Coming attractions for next week apologize that they could show us only seconds 
but they did promise us more answers. And I'll be back here next week with my review of Lost 6.6. In the meantime, I'm Paul Levinson. Enjoy. Paul Levinson still code about an ancient biotech war raging on in secret for centuries. Oh, hey, I just wanted to welcome a brand new sponsor to Levinson News Clips. Why risk suffering the cost of identity theft when the cost to help protect it is so low? LifeLock is only $10 a month, and when you visit LifeLock.com and use the promo code LEV10, you'll also get 10% off your LifeLock membership plus a free trial. That's LifeLock.com. Athens, 2042 A.D. She ripped the paper in half, then ripped the halves, then ripped what was left, again, into bits and pieces of history that could have been. Sierra Waters had read once that, years ago, it was thought that men made love for the thrill, while women made love for the sense of connection it gave them. Sierra had always done everything for the thrill. She ripped the paper in half, then ripped the halves, then ripped what was left again, into bits and pieces of history that could have been. Entertainment Weekly says the plot to save Socrates is challenging fun. The New York Daily News says it's a Da Vinci-esque thriller. And Curled Up With A Good Book says, Sierra Waters is sexy as hell. You can find out more about The Plot To Save Socrates by Paul Levinson at theplottosavesocrates.com. Traveled 2,500 years back in time to ancient Athens to save Socrates from certain death, and now he doesn't want to come back with me. Oi, I'm gonna plot! All this and more in Paul Levinson's The Plots to Save Socrates.